All right, we're back again. I believe this is episode five of the CCAM. We're just gonna be doing multiple quality of life things. I don't know what else to call them in the CCAM. We're gonna be building a whole shelf all the way down this wall. Um, it's almost 100% just for these Rubbermaid, Rubbermaid Roughneck Totes. Uh, we're gonna be putting in building the frame all, all the way behind me for the exhaust fan and through that um, transit at the back from the exhaust fan. We're probably going to be doing some belt sealing up around the front doors. Who knows how far this episode is going to go, but a bunch of little things like that that I'm just going to start with the shelf, then do that, then just show you a couple things in case you're interested. Let's get to her. All right, so the concept is 20 or so of these all the way along the top of the sea can here. So doing a little bit of quick measuring, come on, focus. There we go. We have two by two by three sixteenths angle, two pieces, 20 feet. So there'll be a little bit extra. I don't actually know how much on the end because we're on the inside of the sea can and 40 feet on the outside and 40 feet of angle. So that's gonna be suspended every six feet off of the uh, steel, I don't know what you wanna call them, joists in the ceiling that were in there in the previous videos. Insert picture here, what they look like. So we're gonna drill and tap into them two feet off the wall, and then we're gonna hang a length of half inch threaded rod and use nut and bolt hardware to hang these. And then we're gonna be plywood to the wall, which will have probably a rip two by four or something a lot, all the way along the wall. All right, sorry for the background noise here, but I thought this would be an interesting tip. Is done a lot of like tray construction in the electrical field, where you're doing hangers out of half inch threaded rod in a very similar fashion with beam clamps or however you're doing it um, quite a bit. And so you, you make the cut with a Sawzall or a shear or a zip cut or whatever. And Without this tool, which is the first time I've ever used it, this is a Titan branded deburrer for this purpose. You can see that number on there. But it worked really well. It doesn't look that wonderful, but man, does it work. But before, you could do a little hand file or whatever, then you get the nut half threaded on the trick to get that one last little burr that's catching it. Because you just throw it on as much as you can and you hit it on like a steel workbench or something. And just that of the nut vibrating a little bit will actually like knurl over. Knurl's not the right word, but move the burr over and let you run the nut down the rod like you wanted to. Anyways, thought I'd share that little trick with all of you.
this I thought might be a good time to talk a little bit. So you saw we got the first half up and I figured out by shoving the bin up there near light fixture what the fitment's going to be. So it's 14 inches or 12 inch high bins almost perfectly and 14 inches to, to the top of this L, L and then there'll be 5 eighths ply in there going over to the wall which we'll do afterwards but now we're on to the leveling which is just with a tape measure so I guess it's more like squaring I guess because I don't care if it's level it's just going to be 14 inches off the ceiling which should be level all the way around just we won't be using a level to do it but we might put a level on it later just to joke around got the first one on so this is just staying up there with one nut there and I will just shove it so there's keeper nut on top lock washer just for some preload it's not necessarily really some people would say you should have it on both sides some say you should have it on neither but in this case we're just on one side which is the top and then we're gonna go regular washer steel L one washer below nut that's it pretty simple eh Boom, shelf's done, half filled with stuff already. I really like how it turned out. Still haven't nipped these down because we still might be doing some storage underneath in the future and I could walk freely under them without getting my head on decently tall. But next up, tackling that penetration in the back there, we're gonna be framing it out, putting it in, insulating it, painting that section, an exhaust fan will go in that. A little one I already have, multi-speed. But yeah, and then maybe even trim around it, finish her up, get her better insulated, and then we'll be moving on to maybe some DIY door gaskets, I don't know. Let's get to her. So, to secure this guy in here, I've cut four inch wide by some of my 5 eighths for plywood um, into trim, put one coat of paint on, on already, just made the first couple cuts, and then we're gonna throw her up. The reason I'm not using, you know, just some of my 1x4 that I've had painted up or some of the trim I've made for the others is because this is, 
even though it's a tight fit, as you saw me bash it in there with a couple, you know, a couple screw heads it was hitting, um, this is going to be really what fastens this block out into the opening is to go from this frame to this frame with a with a piece of wood and some screws. Just like that. Let's make it happen. It's nine months later, lots of progress have been, has happened on the Seacan. But just to finish this video off and give you a little sneak peek at what else I've done, but I mean really inconsistent uploader, my bad. Anyways, let's go for a walk. Shelves all the way from there, all the way down. Every blue bin has parts of something in it. Everything's on little magnetic labels that go on the steel. Some are in Sharpie, some are in dry erase, depending on what. If you move the bin because you want it moved, you just move the label. Simple, simple. Obviously the rear penetration is almost as we saw it. Um, there, it that fan got wired up, it works. The switch is by the door. Um, see electrical for the base infrastructure for all of this. Surprise, there's a CNC here. You know, lots of fun stuff. I also happen to twin the shelf over here actually quite recently like a couple weeks ago so seven and a half months after i finished this one i went ahead and did this one this one has an eight foot span so you can put eight foot material up there easier from the inside there's some electrical conduit stuff and light stored and then some paint for now but in the future loop ins there's still lots of room underneath without banging your head we can go another shelf down another foot for storage without hitting our heads. That's the beauty of the high cube. But anyways, thanks for watching Build a Shelf and a Wall Penetration.